Hey, well, welcome back. And what we want to do here is pick up kind of where we left off. So if you didn't follow the first part of this, what we did in the first part was we solve for the support reactions at A and B. And now what we want to do is we want to come back and solve for the bar forces in A, C, and B, C and, and figure out whether those are intention or compression. So let's take a look at where we start. So to do that, what we're going to do is, like any good statics problem, we're going to draw a free body diagram. So to figure out what this force is in A, C, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to cut kind of a free body diagram of, the, of that member where we cut through AC, right? So what we're gonna do here and what we're gonna say is we're just gonna kind of look at, you know, let's say like if we look at uh, joint A, for example, if we look at joint A and draw our free body diagram for joint A, right? This is, you know, point A. Uh, what we're gonna have is we're gonna cut through, you know, this is gonna be a Y, which we already said was 12 kilonewtons. We're gonna say we have, you know, a X, uh, which is also 12 kilonewtons. And in addition, yeah, I want to draw that a little bit better here. We're going to have AX. All right, in addition, we're going to have this member force AC. Okay, so this is our member force AC. And anytime in statics we get a force at an angle, I like to break it up just as a vector into components. So I'm going to say, you know, this we have here is ACY and ACX. So ACX. ACY. So now we have you know, a free body diagram that we can work with. And when we break this into components, what we're doing is we're essentially saying that ACX and ACY are equivalent to AC. So if we were to take ACX, you know, over here, right, and we were to add ACY to it, kind of tip to tail type of thing, right, what we would get as a result is ACY or AC. So these are, you know, equivalent. ACX and ACY are, is equivalent to AC. So we can do this. Okay, so what we're going to say here is we're going to just, you know, some of the forces in the y direction equals zero and what do we get well we get you know a y minus a c y equals zero so in other words a c y just equals a y or 12 kilonewtons okay if we sum forces in the x direction equals zero it's very similar so what do we get well we get you know minus a x plus a c x equals zero so what do we end up with we end up with you know a c x equals 12 kilonewtons Okay, so now we have our components. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and figure out, well, what's our, our resultant? And, you know, maybe this is apparent to you, maybe it's not, but what we're going to do is we're just going to take Pythagorean's theorem where we know that AC squared, you know, has to equal ACX squared plus ACY squared, and that should give us, you know, an answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to say AC, you know, equals the square root of, we're just going to substitute it in here, 12 kilonewtons squared plus 12 kilonewtons squared and what we're going to get is AC equals uh, 288 or you know radical 288 and AC equals 16.97 kilonewtons all right so we got a value right but the question didn't just stop there it didn't, didn't just say was what's the magnitude it said it's an intention or compression and when I think attention and compression I think of you know whether we're pulling away or pushing towards. So tension is always going to be pulling away, okay? So tension's always gonna be pulling away. Whereas compression, if we're looking at compression, that's always going to be pushing towards. Okay, so compression's pushing towards, tension's pulling away. So in this case, what do we have? We have AC, which is pulling straight away, and what we know is if it's pulling away, this is going to be in tension. All right, so we got our answer. We got uh, whether it's in tension or compression. Another thing that I just, that I find too cool to, to not point out um, is, is look at this, ACX and ACY, what do we say, it's 12 and 12. Well, that's, you know, the same as here, AY and AX, 12 and 12. That's pretty cool. Um, also, you'll notice 12 over 12 is the same ratio as for over four, right? So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look for a second. If we have, you know, a, a triangle down here that's four meters by four meters, we're gonna have the square root of 32, right? And, and you'll notice if we look at kind of similar triangles, these are gonna have similar angles. So, you know, this angle might be theta, and in this angle, we're also gonna have theta. 
So if we think of it like this for a second, let's take the tangent of theta. You know, for down here, what that tangent of theta is going to be like, you know, 4 over 4, you know, opposite over adjacent. Well, if we do it up above, it's going to be very similar. It's going to be the tangent of theta is going to equal, you know, up above, it's going to be, well, ACY is the opposite over ACX, which is the adjacent. And you'll notice these two tangent thetas are the same. So what that means is we can set these two equal to each other. So this is just another way of looking at, you know, ACX and ACY. Um, similarly, well, if we know that, we can also look at, well, we have relationships like not just tangent, but we also have something like sine theta, right? So if we take sine theta, the top and the bottom, you know, what we're going to get here is, you know, uh, we're going to have, well, what, what do we have? We, this is going to equal, you know, AC y the opposite over the hypotenuse like ac and the other one is going to be like a, you know equal to 4 over the square root of 32 and again we can relate these two because we have the same relationship here so what we could say is we could say well ac y over ac has to equal 4 over the square root of 32 so when we solve this out this is kind of cool because what we get is AC equals ACY times the square root of 32 over 4. And when we do the math out, right, what we get is we get AC has to equal, you know, 12 kilonewtons times the square root of 32 over 4. And when you plug that into your calculator, right, what you end up getting is the same answer. So what we end up getting here is you know what we is the same 16.97 kilonewtons so just an alternate approach it's just as valid right it's just as valid we got the same value here right as is is up here um just another way of looking at it okay um so that gives us you know joint a what i want to do here is also just look at joint b okay so let's go to joint b and we'll draw all our known forces, our 12 kilonewtons and our 9 kilonewtons. We'll also draw our unknown force here of, let's call this, you know, uh, BC. Because we don't know what it is, so we're just going to assume it's in tension. Is that right? Well, probably not, but, you know, th th let's just go with it for now. Okay, so I like to assume tension is is what we have, you know. And what we, we know is we're going to have components that, BCX. B, C, Y, and hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this, but you know, we sum forces in the Y direction equals zero, and we get what, you know, nine kilonewtons plus B, C, Y equals zero. So we get B, C, Y equals minus nine kilonewtons. So what does that mean? Well, it means what? We assumed B, C was, you know, positive was in tension. We assumed this arrow was pulling away from the face. We assumed tension, and if we get a negative sign, what does that mean? It means we were wrong. You know, so what that means is our instead of actually being in tension, we're in compression. And similarly, what we can do here is we can take well some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. And we can say what? Well, 12 kilonewtons plus BCX has to equal zero. So BCX has to equal negative 12 kilonewtons. Okay, so we can box that in as well. And the negative sign also means, you know, this is wrong. If one component's, you know, in compression, both components are gonna be in compression, right? But basically we have both components in compression. So now if we go back and solve for member, you know, member force BC, you know, one easy way of doing that is Pythagorean's theorem, right? So if we do BC equals the square root of, you know, BCX squared plus BCY squared. What we're gonna need to do here though is we're gonna, you know, we can substitute right in. We can say the square root of, uh, you know, minus 12 kilonewtons squared plus, you know, minus nine kilonewtons squared. And we're gonna get some value for BC. And that BC value is gonna work out to be 15 kilonewtons. What I like to do though is I like to do a negative sign. Right, and the reason being is because I know my components are both negative. These components are both pull uh, instead of really pulling away, they're pushing towards. They're both in compression, so I like to carry that down and say that this is going to be, you know, uh, this is going to be also in compression.
Similarly, if we wanted to look at that geometric approach, right, this is just an alternate approach. You can use either Pythagorean theorem or, right, or you can use this geometric approach, right? Because what do we have? Well, we have what B uh, C Y B C X, right? And we have B C. And you'll notice also we have this geometry here, right? So what's our geometry look like? Well, our geometry, if you remember, is three meters, four meters, and a three, four, five triangle will make this five meters, okay? So what we could say here is, you know, is if we know BCY or BCX, we could write a relationship, for example. We could say, well, okay, let's take a look and say, you know, if this angle is theta, um, what do we have? Well, we have, you know, BCY over BC for cosine, right, has to equal three over five. In, in other words, if we rearrange this, right, what's this give us? It gives us BC has to equal uh, BCY times five thirds. We didn't have to do any square roots. We didn't have to do anything. We just had to recognize a relationship between these similar triangles. So here, similarly, we'll get BC equals well BCY. We had was minus nine kilonewtons, you know, times five thirds. And, and what we're going to get here is the same values. You're going to, you know, minus fifteen kilonewtons. So at the end of the day, we get the same value. You know, we could do it you know, one way or the other. Um, you don't have to do it both. Whichever way makes the more, most sense to you. Just remember, if, if it's pulling away from the joint, it's, it's tension. You know, if it's pulling toward, if it's pushing towards the joint, it's compression. Make sure you label those and you'll do well. All right, so if you have questions, you know, drop a comment. But otherwise, I hope this helps you, you know, solve that, those problems. And um, if you, you know, let me know how it goes. So anyway, till next time, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.